Senator McKenzie has submitted a proposal understanding Order 75 today. It is shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? I note the proposal is supported. With the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the informal arrangements made by the whips. I now give the call to Senator O'Sullivan. Thank you very much, Deputy President. Uh, it is uh, my great pleasure to be able to stand and, and support uh, this very, very important, very important motion. Uh, in the Albanese government's first budget last year, my state of Western Australia, my very great state of Western Australia, uh, saw the first budget cuts to infrastructure, the first, no doubt of many, and certainly the first in a long line of budgets, because we had, while we were in government, a very proud record of, uh, of, of continuing to invest into the infrastructure needs of, of Western Australia. And, uh, We've seen some, some cuts, unfortunately, that, uh, that have hit Western Australia, Western Australia's infrastructure spending, and, uh, and I think it's a great shame. So I do take pride today in standing up and, and bringing this to the awareness of the Senate, indeed. Now, this government over there likes to talk the talk in Western Australia. They said that they're going to put WA first. And they ran a very WA-centric campaign. To their credit, they ran a very WA-centric campaign over there. You didn't have Eastern States ads run over in WA, which was a very good move of the, uh, the Labor Party, I've got to say, something that, that we should take uh, a leaf out of in, uh, in the next campaign. I'll be making sure that, uh, uh, that, that that point is made when we're designing our campaign again. But, so they, they did, they did put it, make a claim that they were going to put WA first. But what we're seeing, though, is that it's all just talk. So they kind of hoodwink the, Australian, the West Australian people into supporting them. And you know, West Australian people, sadly, uh, did put a lot of strength behind their, uh, behind their decision. Uh, they made a decision to, to elect the, the Albanese government. And in Western Australia, uh, we lost a lot of seats as Liberals. And, and, uh, and it's on the back of the fact that they ran a campaign that said that uh, they were going to put Western Australia first. But what we're seeing is they're not doing that. They haven't done that. Uh, it's across many areas, and in particular, in relation to infrastructure, they're all talk and no action. Uh, all up, infrastructure programs in Western Australia saw cuts uh, to over the forward estimates, including $22 million from the Northern Australian Roads Program, $114 million uh, from the roads of strategic importance and 1.3 million from the Road Black Spots program. So let, let's look at some of these cuts and, and what it represents to the southern suburbs of Perth, where, where I'm from. My office is down in the southern suburbs and I live down in the southern suburbs of Perth. Uh, there's a $17.8 million and completion delay of one year to the Quinana and Mitchell Freeway barrier upgrades. There's a $1.3 million uh, and project commencement delay of, of one year to the Leach Highway and Stock Road grade separation project, very important project to take uh, freight off that uh, very busy intersection and, and to deal with the, have that grade separation. 3.5 million and a project completion delay of two years for the Nicholson Road and Garden Street grade separation and the electorate of Burt. There's 101 million budget cut from the 2022-23 budget and a 17.8 million dollar in the forward estimates for the Tonkin Highway Stage 3 extension in the seat of Canning, and there's a $99.7 million cut from the Pinjarra Heavy Haulage Deviation Stage 1 and 2 and project delayed for two years. Now, these are significant projects that were necessary, that were committed to by the previous government, and uh, because they're needed. They're needed and we're seeing this government is, is cutting them. These are just a couple of the projects where the Albanese government has made cuts from the last budget and, and or, or put uh, 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 delays that directly impact Western Australians, and it's a shame. West Australians, uh, the West Australian Labor government uh, ha are not very good at uh, delivering projects. They, they keep delaying them. We saw the, uh, the, the, the airport rail link uh, delayed many, many years. I mean, it actually started under the Barnett government, and now two terms in, they've only j literally just, just completed that project. It was delayed significantly. Uh, now, not to mention, of course, the, the, uh, the, the cancelling of the Row 8 and 9 project. 
this is an important. The freight link to, to Fremantle was an absolute uh, is, is a vital project that has been uh, abandoned by this government. We kept it in the contingent liability when we were in government, and this lot over here have taken it out. And it's a it's a real shame because it means that there was you know there was over one point eight billion dollars I think it was that was earmarked to be able to go into delivering that project. And this Labor Your government is turning their back on Western Australia. I call to Senator Brown. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. I now rise to speak on the matter of public importance raised um, today by Senator um, Mackenzie. And, to, and I will start off by correcting the record because there's inf there has been no infrastructure. Um, cancelled in Western Australia, um, regardless of what you might have uh, understood from that previous, um, um, previous contribution by Senator O'Sullivan. And one of the things that uh, Senator O'Sullivan didn't talk about in his um, contribution was that the Liberals and National Parties left us with a mess to deal with. After nine years, of using infrastructure investment as a political weapon, not as funding critical infrastructure for uh, states and territory, but as their own a political weapon to garner votes. Now, the um, former government spent more time, more time thinking up announcements than addressing the deterioration of the nation's road networks. Now, these are the facts. We now have a motion brought to the Senate by Senator Mackenzie, who is the absolute front to raise concerns after nine years of inaction. The only action they actually uh, did take were making announcement after announcement, sometimes multiple announcements on the same um, piece of uh, infrastructure, nine years of using the regional grant programs to fund inner-city swimming pools, nine years of drafting and releasing me media releases with no real plans and no real evidence or, or outcomes for um, Australian communities. And as a result, it left an infrastructure pipeline line full of zombie, zombie projects, under-costed commitments and a challenge to manage delivery in the context of rising inflation and supply pressures. That's the real, that's the real um, situation, and that's what Senator O'Sullivan, in his contribution, um, should have been honest about. That the infrastructure pip pipeline <coughs> left by the Liberal Coalition government after nine years was full of zombie projects, under-costed commitments and a, chal and a challenge to manage in the co context of uh, rising inflation and supply pressures. Now, there's no better example of the coalition's failures than the hopelessly mismanaged urban congestion fund. And as I've been speaking to the sector um, since I've become an assistant minister, I have to say I, I've lost count of how many times they've talked about the fact that they are so pleased that the urban uh, congestion fund has, um, has killed. been killed. Yeah because it wasn't being used um, in, any, in any fair way. It was being used as the Liberal Party's slush fund. So the urban congestion fund, full of imaginary car parks in marginal seats, projects that would require two or three hundred per cent more investment to actually deliver, and years, years of delay. And I could mention the former Treasurer's commitment of a $260 million um, um, commitment to remove a level crossing in his own electorate without even telling the state government about it. Or, and I, I have to also let the Senate know, 
that it was hundreds of millions of dollars short, short of the actual funding required to do the job. And that is exactly how the former government ran um, the infrastructure in this um, country. It was wholly underfunded, mo only uh, used to get votes, only as their own private slush funds, and that's the reality. So after nine years of in in inaction, I'm pleased to say to the Senate Thank that you, the work Senator of the Albanese your, Labor government has already done. Your time has expired. Senator Wish Wilson. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Um, first point I wanted to make about this uh, matter of public interest, which I thought was interesting, was uh, Senator McKenzie uh, talking about uh, roads have been deteriorated and become potholed due to floods and rain events. Um, I just, uh, just before Christmas, I, I drove across Victoria and South Australia and did the Nullarbor myself, and I, I must admit that it was just post the very significant floods in Victoria, and uh, yes, the roads were terrible and there were roadworks everywhere. It's also what I experienced in uh, northern Queensland after, after uh, record, record rains this year. And I, the first point I want to acknowledge is um, climate change is a very big impact on infrastructure and is going to continue to be a very big impact on infrastructure. Um, and the second point I want to make today in my very brief time is the circular economy. Now, um, I've been pinging away at various estimates in, in recent years to Ost Roads and Infrastructure Australia, asking when the government's going to step up and start procuring recycled content for the use in roads. So we spend tens of billions of dollars a year at local, state and federal government level on roads. And um, while not probably the highest value use for recycled product, uh, they certainly do provide uh, a home for recycled products. And if the government was to actually buy uh, recycled products for our roads, then we would have to create a market for the recycling industry who's telling us they can take uh, soft plastics, for example, like in the Red Cycle scheme. Uh, but the reason they haven't been taking them and recycling them is no one's buying them. No one's buying the product they're creating. So I'll give, give you this as an example, which I put to uh, Infrastructure Australia recently. Sustainability Victoria's website says one particular project, which they put up as a case study, down a soft plastic asphalt road in Craggyburn in Melbourne's north. And as a metric, they talked about recycled content breakdown. Now, every one kilometre of road, which is two lanes, is paved with plastic and glass modified asphalt. It uses approximately, this is one kilometre, 530,000 recycled plastic bags. 170,000 recycled glass bottles, 12,500 used printer cartridges and 130 tonnes of reclaimed asphalt. How's that? That's for one kilometre of road. Now, if we're building thousands of kilometres of road every year and uh, we can use these products, why wouldn't we create a circular economy, um, provide them, the government steps in and provides a market for the recycling industry, gives us the confidence they need to invest in upgrading? Uh, we can actually take these soft plastics from our supermarkets, for our recycling systems, curbside, etc., and we've actually got a ready market for it. That's, that's circular economy thinking. So anyway, the Greens have been pinging away for some time on this. We are starting to see more, uh, more interest uh, from Infrastructure Australia. Uh, and I just want to put it on the Senate's table today because I think it's a very exciting opportunity. Thank you, Senator. Senator Chandler. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Um, and it is my pleasure to rise and speak on this matter of public importance moved in the Senate today by my friend and colleague, Senator Bridget McKenzie. I'm very pleased to be speaking here today about the neglect of critical infrastructure funding um, as a result of the new government's actions. We know infrastructure investment is absolutely critical for economic development, for productivity, for road safety. And that is why the former coalition government placed such a high priority on investing in infrastructure across the country that we need for the future. And certainly uh, in my first few years in this place, being in the government, it's felt like almost um, every, every week or every month that we're back at home in Tasmania, um, I was going out and talking about a new roads project around the state, whether that was um, more funding for the Midland Highway upgrades, whether it was um, funding the uh, southeast traffic solution through to the southern beaches and Sorrell. 
um, very exciting projects and projects that um, Tasmania needs to ensure that we have the infrastructure, particularly the roads infrastructure for our growing population, for our transit corridors, for our tourism industry, to support our economy and our population into the future. Um, and it was my great pleasure to um, be advocating for those projects when we were in government. But in contrast, in its first budget last year, the Albanese government cut more than $9.6 billion from infrastructure programs across the country. And we know that 36 infrastructure projects have been cancelled entirely and many more have been delayed. Um, many of the cancelled and delayed projects are, are dam projects, and there are also huge cuts to road and rail infrastructure programs. And I think that's really disappointing because that is the sort of infrastructure that we need to be investing in in the longer term. And it's no surprise that Labor are cutting infrastructure projects, um, Madam Acting Deputy President, because as we've seen today, uh, their political strategy is always to do deals with the Greens. They've decided that their strategy for their time in government is to side with the most anti-development, anti-jobs and anti-infrastructure party in Australia. So it's no surprise uh, to see them reducing spending on infrastructure. And it's no wonder that they've decided that one of the ways they're going to try and plug holes in their budget is to cancel infrastructure projects and delay infrastructure spending, reprofile infrastructure spending. This is an attitude that is going to put uh, at risk really important projects right across the country. At the very least, uh, it is going to delay the completion of road projects which Australians are relying on to make our highways and our road networks safer and more efficient. In my own state of Tasmania, we have seen the Labor government drop tens of millions of dollars in project funding out of the budget across a number of projects which the coalition funded and was building, some of which I uh, referenced in the first few minutes of my speech here today. In government, the coalition made record investments into Tasmanian road and rail infrastructure. More than $4.5 billion was committed by the previous government, including funding the largest infrastructure projects in Tasmanian history. The last budget we handed down included $639 million for Tasmanian infrastructure projects. But in Labor's first budget, in contrast, $66 million of that has disappeared off the books. That includes funding for projects like the Tasmanian Roads Package, the Hobart to Sorrell Corridor, the Freight Capacity Upgrade Program and the Tasman Bridge upgrades. These are incredibly important projects. They were projects that I was certainly very proud to be um, fighting for in government, and I'm incredibly disappointed to see the funding slipping away under this new government. And there is no doubt that when we get another budget in just a few months, in May this year, we are going to see the same tactic repeated again. If they want to save a few million dollars to plug a hole in the budget, they'll cut projects, they'll push funding from one year out to the next to get it off the books. And of course, when they have finished cutting infrastructure programs to save some dollars, they will come for Australian workers and slug them with more taxes. This is a government which would prefer to be doing deals with the Greens than building infrastructure. And today's dirty deal between Labor and the Greens isn't the first deal they've done which is terrible news for investment in Australia, and I certainly don't think it's going to be the last. We are going to see this again and again and again. Labor and the Greens in a back room stitching up a deal to attack job-creating investments. What we saw today was nothing but was um, the Labor government's agenda rather being announced in a Greens press conference, and nothing could sum up this government better than that. Senator, your time has expired. Senator Stuhl. Oh, yes. Thank you, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. And I do wish to make my contribution, unlike some others. I actually got a bit of skin in the game here. I actually know what I'm talking about. Actually, for sins of my previous life, I've had to sit through rack Senate estimates day in, day out, to, to ridiculous hours of the night, listening to all the same questions being regurgitated year in, year out, day in, day out. You get the drift, Madam Acting Deputy President. But I think I'll have a crack without a written speech and see how far I go, shall I? All right? And you won't hear me having to parrot party lines, because unlike some of them over that side, I actually ran my own business. I didn't just come through the system, you know, work for Senator. I like said some. 
like Thank some, you, I Senator. said. I've actually run my Thank own you, business. Senators. I know what it's like, Madam Deputy President, when you sit there at the end of the table after a hard run to cut an hour or broom and you're absolutely exhausted and you get home to see the babies, get home to see the wife, and it's all right for us blokes on the road because all we had to do, that the bill came through the mail, Fiona would go and get the mail, there'd be the tyre bill, there'd be the fuel bill, there'd be the repairs and maintenance from, from Kenworth or there was from Scania or whichever truck out at the time, and there'd be a finger thing there, you know, like the finger with the piece of ribbon tied on it? Remember 30 days, then sometimes remember 45. Oh, I don't know what it's like to sit at the end of the table and think, where are we going to get the next dollar? Where is that next dollar going to come to pay off our debts, to pay the fuel, to pay the tyres, to pay the repairs and maintenance, to pay the, the taxes that we had to pay? All the good stuff that goes with being in business. So on saying that, it's very, very easy, and some of my colleagues over there, particularly Senator Scar, who's, who's been uh, uh, had a lifetime in business and employing people on that, you actually understand you can only spend what you've got. And I'll rephrase that. There's only so long you can go spending what you haven't got until you get caught out. And what worst time have we seen this year? And we'll talk about roads and infrastructure. And I love roads and infrastructure. I love roads for an obvious reason, because we get to drive big trucks on them and deliver freight all around the nation. We bring it in, we take it out. We talk about our agricultural industry, how wonderful it is, and so we should. We talk about our mining industry and how wonderful that is. But the majority of stuff moved in this nation goes on the back of a truck. We need good roads. Sadly, in this nation, we don't have good roads. But I do know when you start making promises that you cannot keep, there's going to be a problem. And you see, you hear the lines parroted by, by members of the other side that don't know what to talk about, but they've got to fill 15 minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, and they've got to take one for the team. So they'll go in, they'll say, what's the speaking notes? Give me something to talk about. And then they just go to the lowest common denominator. Now, I've been here a little while, and I've seen the standard of the conversations in this room deteriorate over the years, to the point where I'm embarrassed. We see kids coming through the galleries up here. We see people sitting in the chamber coming to see how this democracy works. And there's nothing wrong with some good, you know, entertaining uh, uh, banter. There's nothing wrong with a fierce defence of my ideas versus your, your ideas and the other way around. But the standard in this chamber has absolutely deteriorated over the years. You hear all the same things like, you know, grubby deals, your green mates, and you think, haven't you got something? If you, if you can't make a, if you can't make an intelligent conversation or intelligent point in the conversation, tell your whip you're not going to get up there and make a googie yourself. Sit down and leave it to others to put in some good information and put forward some good ideas. So I have to take my good friend Senator Sullivan, and this is the second time today I've been blowing wind up the back of your shirt, because I have a great respect for you, Senator O'Sullivan, but you're only, I can't blame you, because you're parroting the lines that's coming from your opposition, your, uh, not your opposition, your mate, um, the Shadow Minister's office, Senator Bridget McKenzie's office, that Labor slashed $9.6 billion. I had the mispleasure of having to sit in Senate estimates alongside a number of senators here. Senator McKenzie was asking questions, Senator Canavan, and, and talking about all these projects Labor slashed. What Labor did was the grown-ups got in. Now, 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 you're not going to like this, but we had Mr Frydenberg and we had Mr Morrison running round the nation announcing project after project after project in infrastructure. And I'd love to be able to make stuff up, but you've got to pay for it. Nothing was slashed. There were projects that were unfunded. There were projects that the state governments hadn't even agreed on. There was projects that there was no plans for, and quite rightfully so. The grown-ups have got, whoa, hang on, we've got to get infrastructure in this nation, but we've got to have the ability to pay for it. We've got to have the ability to have contractors that can provide the staff to do it. And we've got to, whether Mr Morrison liked it or not, you actually got to get agreement from the state governments and the local governments. I don't blame you, Senator O'Sullivan. Senator McKenzie set you up for a four. Senator Hanson. I rise, to, I rise to speak in support of this matter. One of the best investments the government can make is in the infrastructure needed to support future prosperity. However, this government has shown its contempt for regional Australia and slashed almost $10 billion from vital nation-building projects. Last week, I met with representatives from the Doomagee and Berkshire councils affected by the floods in northern Queensland. They are having helicopters fly in supplies at $40,000 per trip because they have been cut off by floods for two months. 
They desperately need $75 million to raise crossings and bridges outside Burke, Doomagee and Mount Isa, which will secure their communities' links with the rest of Australia. Labor must prioritise infrastructure as a long-term investment supporting regional Australian communities over useless measures like increasing the foreign aid budget by $241 million to more than $4.5 billion. This must include projects like the $5.4 billion Hell's Gate Dam in North Queensland, which Labor scrapped in the budget. The, there were substantial benefits from this project, more than 10,000 jobs during construction, contributing about $1.3 billion to the local economy, more than 3,000 ongoing jobs, up to 60,000 hectares of new irrigated land producing a diverse range of high-value projects worth at least $800 million per year and up to $6 billion per year contributed to the local economy. It is nation-building, wealth-creating projects like these which must be prioritised by the government to give regional areas like North Queensland the chance to thrive. And I will continue to keep pushing for the Bradfield scheme that will give water security to Australia, but that makes too much sense for the brain-dead politicians in this place. Senator Cadell. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. This government and their New South Wales colleagues are intent on slashing and burning funding in regional New South Wales, my home state. It's no wonder when Labor's camp own campaign bus can't leave Sydney without having a flat battery to go flat. Not only can they not represent us, they won't even visit us. When this Labor government was elected last year, they did cut, and I thank Senator Stirl for reminding us, $9.6 billion from the infrastructure projects. Now, what does that mean to regional Australia? There was $7 billion just cut from dams across the estimates, including two New South Wales major dams at Dungowan and Wyangla. These vital water storage projects that secure essential water supply for our regional communities have been gutted. The communities around them are gutted and the, the ability to plan for the future destroyed. What is more concerning, Mr President, is that we know that Labor and New South Wales Labor does not care about New South Wales regional uh, areas either. These people are all about cost-benefit ratios or CBRs, and where there aren't people, they don't stack up. When we put money there, it's called a rort or a waste. But it's a chicken and the egg. If you don't build the roads, if you don't build the infrastructure, if you don't build these things, people can't go there. And in COVID, we saw people move to the regions. They move for lifestyles. They move for tree chains. They move for sea chains. They realised they could have a better life outside of cities. But housing supply was tight. Infrastructure wasn't there, and they have moved back. If you spend this money in regional areas, they will come. We have regions of dreams, not fields of dreams, in our country. Thanks, Build it and they will come. But this government, they cut, they delay and they rip the hearts out of uh, regional communities. And it is important to expose the legacy of this federal government after just nine months in office because it is a foretaste of what the – ten months, sorry, even worse – the uh, people of New South Wales can expect under the new uh, Premier Chris Minns and Labor. Now, of course, we're used to, and we'll see this in New South Wales, Labor saying one thing before the election and do something else after the election. And it's not just inf infrastructure. We've seen it across all things. I'm sure senators of the Greens Party see the promises were made in the green areas that haven't come through after the election. We're seeing that in super. We're seeing that in energy prices. And it's because regional Australia doesn't vote for you because they see through you. It's because Labor doesn't understand our communities. And when the promises come down to Labor, the regions and the bush is expendable. It is a cost of doing business, regional infrastructure. But it just doesn't affect national party seats. Labor party seats, I'm looking in um, Dan Repicoli's seat in Hunter, Minister, uh, member for Hunter. It's a great road, a great business waiting to open up in Mandalong Road. Lake Macquarie Council is Labor mayor, Labor seat. That funding is unsure of going forward to open up huge potential in that area under this budget. And so what we see is more of the same. We experience, of, and I now say 10 months under this, we are going to get the same in New South Wales. What does that mean across Western Highway? Well, the Liberals and Nationals understand how critical the Great Western Highway is to upgrade the Central West to get that pathway through to open up freight lines, to open up potential businesses, to open up so many things. 
It's a project that has been spoken of for decades and its ability to transform travel for thousands of people and tens of millions of, of dollars worth of business. But again, the Labor campaign bus never made it that far, so they've never seen what it's going to do. The federal government and the state gov uh, the last federal government and the last state government promised to commit that Great Western Highway Tunnel as an essential piece of nation building. But the weekend's result has ended 20 years of progress on this vital upgrade. Labor has promised to scrap the tunnel and is not prepared to invest in the big infrastructure projects to keep the state going. It's becoming clear that day after day that Labor will not build the infrastructure our regional Australia and regional New South Wales leads. New South Wales Labor built nothing for 16 years when they were last in office, and now they have won election, they will go back to doing what they are doing. We've seen this government already slash and burn regional programs and projects all over New South Wales, with a growing list of broken promises. At the last election, the slogan was, it won't be easy under Albanese, now Prime Minister. We've seen mortgage holders and superannuates know that the statement has been proved right. To, that New South, to the new New South Wales government, I say, do the right thing, keep New South Wales, uh, regional New South Wales moving, because next time under the state election, I think there'll be nobody wins under Chris Minns. Thank you. The time for discussion has expired. The Senate will now.